Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, soluble guanylate cyclase. Uh, so we are uh, in the process of looking at pharmacological agents that uh, interact with soluble guanylate cyclases. So, uh, we have so far seen ODQ, or 1H124-oxidiazolo-43A uh, uh, quinosalin one ohm. Okay? So, uh, that's why it's usually just referred to as ODQ. Now, uh, there is another, um, another pharmacological agent which is believed to act uh, in a very similar way as ODQ. And this is N52O28. So N52O28. Okay, so N52O28 uh, is believed also to work by oxidizing this iron 2 plus cation at the center of our heme, our, of our prosthetic heme group on the side of the beta 1 uh, subunit of our soluble guanylate cyclase enzyme. And basically, it's believed to oxidize it to this ferric cation. And then, uh, that ferric cation basically doesn't uh, interact with nitric oxide in the same way. And when nitric oxide uh, binds and forms a coordinate bond with that ferric cation, it doesn't then result in the activation of the uh, enzyme in the same way as uh, it did when there was the ferrous uh, cation at the center of the heme group. Okay, so N52028 is believed to act in a very similar way to ODQ. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, the next, um, the next um, pharmacological agent which can be used to inhibit uh, soluble guanylalcyclase enzymes is methylene blue. So we'll put this up here. Now, methylene blue is not believed to directly inhibit uh, the um, is not believed to directly inhibit the iron, um, well, the heme group in the same way as uh, ODQ and N52028 does. Instead, it does the same thing. It converts the iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus, but it does it in an indirect way. So methylene blue leads to the production of oxygen radicals, basically. Now, oxygen radicals are extremely uh, reactive structures uh, which have an unpaired electron which they are trying to get another electron uh, to in order to uh, make a pair of electrons basically okay so what they are capable of doing is nicking the electron from the iron uh, 2 plus cation and turning it in the process into an iron 3 plus cation so the oxygen radicals are then the oxidizing agent uh, which are going to oxidize the uh, ferrous cation into the ferric cation okay so methylene blue also inhibits um, also inhibits the um, guanylyl cyclase enzyme, uh, but indirectly, but through the same mechanism as ODQ and N52028. Now, the final drug I want to talk about is a drug known as YC1. Now, YC1 is actually an activator of soluble guanylate cyclase enzymes. And what it does is it binds to, a, um, to the soluble guanylate cyclase enzyme and it causes an activation of the enzyme. Uh, and moreover, what it does is when nitric oxide comes and binds to the enzyme, activating it, the amount by which nitric oxide is going to activate it is going to increase. So I want to stress this, YC1 does not activate the enzyme on its own. What it does is it potentiates the activation by nitric oxide. So when nitric oxide comes and activates the enzyme, its activation will have a greater effect than when YC1 was not present. In addition, YC1 also hugely increases the uh, effect of carbon monoxide on activating this enzyme. So when carbon monoxide comes and forms this six coordinate structure with the, um, fe uh, the ferrous cation at the center of this prosthetic heme group, uh, then now the effect of that on the, uh, on the guanylyl cyclase enzyme is going to be increased. And in fact, the amount that uh, YC1 amplifies the response to nitric oxide 
is much smaller than the amount by which it amplifies the, respon amplifies the response to carbon monoxide. So maybe it, uh, what I mean by that is maybe it amplifies the response to carbon monoxide by 2, and maybe it amplifies the response to nitric oxide by 1.1. I don't know, I've just made those numbers up. The point is that relatively, what it's going to do is increase the sensitivity to carbon monoxide uh, relative to nitrogen, uh, sorry, relative to nitric oxide. Okay, so let me just sort of show that on a graph. So, if we um, said, let's say, that the level of activation by nitric oxide is up here, and the level of activation by carbon monoxide is here, then, um, that, let's say that was before the YC1 bound. Now, when the YC1 binds, it's going to raise both of them. So it might raise nitric oxide up to there, but it's going to raise carbon monoxide's effect much larger, by a much greater amount than it's going to raise the effect of nitric oxide. So, how close the activation of the enzyme by carbon monoxide is to nitric oxide, uh, they become closer, uh, effectively, at how, as far as how good at activating the enzyme is concerned. <laughs>